RMG's Trash Talk is brought to you by Scrubs 911, Somerset's medical uniform store. Learn more at scrubs911.com or like them on Facebook. Well, folks, back-to-back -back week where we have Jennerstown racers come into the studio. Last week we had Cindy Rhodes. She was a great interview. And this week we have Scott Mitchell. Scott, thank you for taking time out of your day. Welcome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Anytime. All right, so what is the earliest memory you have of wanting to race? Uh, my father used to race motorcycles from the time I was, that I can remember. We raced, uh, he dragged race and we traveled all over the, uh, probably within four hours from Somerset here and to drag race motorcycles and I always have been in racing. What were some of the locations he would race? Would it be interstate, outer state? Uh, yeah, all over. Uh, like, in, back in the uh, early 70s, they would uh, drag race. Uh, he was a member of the A-Bait, and they had all these local tracks that we would show up. There was one in Shanksville. That's where I spent a lot of time in Shanksville. Mm -hmm. And then there was a bunch down in Hyman, uh, uh, down there, Baltimore. I can't remember the names because I was very small. Mm -hmm. So, how old were you when you were in your first race, whether it was uh, go-karts or motocross or? Uh, motorcycles. I started motorcycles. Uh, I probably raced mini bikes and motorcycles since I was six. I was on a ride on a bicycle and diapers. <laughs> yeah, and I, I learned very early on how to ride bikes. And I tell you what, just I've never been on a motorcycle, but I can only imagine. I've just driven a three-wheeler around, and that, I thought that was a little dangerous doing that, but I've always kind of wondered what it was like to race motocross or motorcycles. Uh, I'd still do that every weekend also, or a lot of the weekends. My boy is a, a motocross rider for... Uh, really? Yes, an AMA motocross rider, and we uh, he gave it up. I went through a divorce several years ago, and he gave it up for a while. We're just now getting back into it, and uh, we was just racing on, or riding on Sunday down at uh, Johnstown Pleasure Valley. They had a motocross track, a ride day, and we was down there, and... Uh, He's on a 250 now, he's 14 years old, and that's why I bought this race car for it, and I'm driving, it was for him. Did he do well in that race? Uh, it wasn't a race, it was practice day, okay. and he's just got a brand new bike, we just got a new uh, Yamaha YZ 250F, and it was probably the third time he rode it, and, and he, do, he does great, yes. He has uh, several state championships as a amateur on a 50cc and 65cc, and uh, and now we're getting back into it, so that's another journey. So racing is in the family genes, oh, isn't yes. it? <laughs> oh, yes. We <laughs> Motorcycles, four-wheelers, anything with a uh, motor on it, we're going to ride it. And if we're in a foot race, him and I, I'll trip him to win. We're still, <laughs> we're still that competitive. All right, so when was your first race at Jennerstown? Uh, early 91, uh, I used to help Ron Delano. We started with, a, uh, with the pro stocks or street stocks at Jennerstown, and then I helped him. And then uh, the following year, he moved up and I bought a, or bought a pure stock and built my first car. And I raced in the pure stock division back in early 91 and 92. I think that first year I won three races. The uh, second year I won the championship and six races. And in your time at Jennerstown, have you always been in the Charger division? Yes, I helped in many other uh, many other classes in different in um, dirt and uh, asphalt. There, I helped many other people, and uh, yeah, that's the farthest I went on asphalt is in the Chargers. I've uh, been in some faster cars, but that's where I always stayed. Uh, now, can you tell me about the Charger division, whether it be? What, the modifications you can have to the car or how a fan could maybe like if they really want to get into the sport? Well, I paid uh, $4,000 for my car. Like I said, I bought this for my son. I'm trying to get him off those motorcycles, but it's not working. Uh, yeah, I paid $4,000 for my first car. I took the motor apart and rebuilt it. It's a 305 uh, stock, uh, stock bore, stock stroke on a 305 engine. It's the same as a old Monte Carlo SS from like 84 three to 87, that's what, I, that's what we're running now. Uh, it's an automatic transmission. Uh, they're basically stock. You can't do much to the uh, motor and it's a stock two barrel, so it's easy for them to check and see if anybody is cheating. So you said you've basically been in the Charger division since you started racing in 91. Yes. Um, so you've been, have you had that one single crew that you've had all since then, or have you had some crew changes? Yes, a uh, lot, of, lot of changes. Uh, 
We house two cars at my house. We have uh, Sean Beams. He's in the street stock division now and winning quite a bit. Uh, he, we house his car at my house and then my car also. And then we have a, uh, well, we're maybe in the process of building two more cars. Uh, and we help our local competitors that come out. Uh, we had, in the last three weeks, we had three different cars in my shop to help them to get faster and uh, more competition and, and, and to hang out with the guys. It's a, it's a good time. Yeah, I mean, especially the competition has always been something big. You, like the more cars, the better the race is. Yes. Obviously. Yes. So, did you, when Jennerstown closed, did you ever think it was going to reopen? I was hoping it was. It's such a beautiful facility. Uh, like I said, I raced. Uh, I helped. Uh, well, Ron had a dirt late model. Uh, Brandon, who. I spent a lot of time with when he was growing up. I worked there at Delano's when Brandon was growing up, so he was with me quite a bit, and I helped him on his dirt super late model, and uh, we traveled around, and, and there is some very nice facilities in the tri-state area within two or three hours of here, but uh, like I said, Jennerstown has always been home to me, always. And I know the owners, and uh, like I said, the, uh, I raced with several of the owners over the years, and uh, they always treated us great, and I went down to watch them last year with my son, and uh, we got called up into the stands and uh, one of the owners gave me a car to build my, build my car and that's the one sitting out back. I didn't build my own yet. I, like I said, we just, uh, it's in the process. We might build another one. That's awesome. Uh, now, since the return of Jennerstown, is there anything uh, you like that they're doing now or maybe even dislike that they're doing right now? Uh, the, the crowds are great and like I said, the. Uh, the sponsors are coming, they are. Uh, I'm not one of them that go out and search for sponsors and ask for money, that's not me. I do a lot of it uh, uh, by myself and uh, I have some help, but uh, like I said, uh, I think they're doing a great job uh, bringing in these special races. Like I said, the Super Modifieds, they were excellent. Uh, and, and they're doing everything right. And, and inside the pits, it's a, different, it's a different feel than what it used to be when I was younger. Like I said, uh, we're helping each other. And we're all trying to make the track better and the competition better and for the fans for something to do and try to, hopefully it stays reasonably priced. I mean, uh, uh, we have to buy tires from the track and fuel from the track, but like I said, they, they're keeping the cost down and that's why we're there. I mean, they're to support them and they're supporting us. So hopefully it works out. Anything to help build that that racing community back. Yes, that's what we're trying to do. Now, you just mentioned uh, going out and getting sponsors. Can you tell me about your sponsors, who they are, and what they provide? Oh, sure. Uh, okay, we just picked up uh, Berkey Bow 2 Plus 2 uh, several weeks ago. They give us uh, products. They have a lot of products. Local company here, uh, many lubricants in like uh, Brake Queen and stuff like that, which really helped out because we go through a lot of that in these cars. <laughs> uh, uh, my mother was a big help, you know, uh, she supported my father passed away uh, last year, November 2nd, and he was big into racing. And like I said, I, I wanted to get my kid into this. And uh, my mother really supports it and comes to the races. She's 74 years old and there pretty much every week. Uh, we have uh, Sean Beam and his team. Like I said, we work together. It's not just one crew. It's two crews come together with two cars right now and uh, supporting other groups. Uh, and Ron, Ron's Collision Center, where I work, uh, he lets me run the rollback to and from the racetrack so I don't have to have a trailer right now. Uh, I didn't have to make that investment, which was a huge help. Uh, let me think who else we got. Oh, Stick Finger Signs, come and letter my car and put his name on the car for nothing, which, you know, that's another help there also. Uh, who else do I got there? Oh, and Rocket Rick, my uh, Rocket Rick Koontz is a local guy. He raced with us when we was kids. Mm -hmm. In the early 90s, he built our motors. Uh, he was a local engine builder here. He got out of it for many years. Uh, went, did several tours in Iraq, and now he's back helping us. And, and it's like the old group is getting back together. Okay. He's building our motors, and he was at my house last night tuning them. And it was, it's fun hanging out with everybody. So check the standings. You're third in the Charger division right now. What is your overall analysis of the season so far? Um, I am, uh, my car is handling great. Uh, it's. I'm not getting beat up too bad. And I have uh, other people running it for me. Like I said, I'm at the motocross track sometimes with my boy uh, Brandon jumped in at one time this year and went out and had fun. Uh, the other night in the, uh, we're trying to keep it fun. Uh, and if I can't make it one night, I'll find somebody else to drive the car. I got many old drivers that are friends and they'll be there with it. Uh, 
we uh, on the top of my car it says house car because we don't know who's going to be in the car and that's uh, that's what makes it fun the other night it rained i had five different drivers in it out there drying a the track and my son was one of them 14 year olds and uh and and we just sat there and laughed the whole time and that's what we're trying to do make it fun when i'm in that car i'm laughing and smiling the whole time and i don't want to take it serious uh just enjoying myself and now we look at the numbers uh, the Charger division has the, the least amount of cars uh, compared to all the other divisions that are there. Uh, with the four cylinders kind of being in another entry level for them, do you think that the four cylinders might take over or do you think it's just a, more of a balancing act at this point? Uh, I'm not sure. I hope they keep the, all the divisions. Mm -hmm. um, there's not much purse money in that class and, it's a, and it is a big investment to build one of those cars. Uh, uh, there's guys I hear rumors and uh, probably very good rumors that they have seven thousand dollars just in their motors, and uh, that's a pretty big investment. They only win a hundred dollars on, on the uh, on the average week, so you're not making a whole lot of money, but you're there for fun. You don't have uh, our tires last us four weeks, and they're a hundred dollars a piece, and so so. Uh, I, and I think once they realize that, and some more people come in and. Uh, maybe the purse money comes up, you can keep that class because it's, uh, it's a step between the four cylinders and the street stocks. There's a lot of people, uh, uh, the street stocks are, or the pure stock or the four cylinders are very fast. I don't think they have the full frame and if those four cylinders move up to the street stocks, that's a big change in chassis design and stuff like that. Like I said, I hope they keep it as steps that you come up there and learn how to make a full frame car work and a rear wheel drive car work. It's a big difference, big difference. So do you ever plan on moving up a division and just kind of leave the Charger in the back or are you there to help the Charger division grow? Well, I, I, like I said, I bought that car for my kid. That was for him and he wasn't allowed in it. So I'm in it for now and other people are in it. I'm probably, we're thinking about moving up to a street stock. Uh, we have some possibilities there. I've been looking in the car out back to build. We're just not sure what we're going to do. Uh, there's many more cars sitting out there that aren't at the track yet. And they didn't bring them. I don't know if they're, you know, if they don't like the rules or something's going on. But hopefully they come around when they see that there's, the track's going to be open and there, are, there is going to be cars show up uh, on a weekly basis. And I'm, I hope they get there soon because, like I said, the more the merrier and it's a good time. So the more the merrier, what do you think this sport needs to keep growing so that you can have more numbers there? That's what we do. We try to keep youth involved. Last night we had another young man show up at my house. He was 15 years old and he met us at the racetrack and, and uh, he showed up last night. His mother dropped him off. He wanted to learn how to work on race cars. Uh, he did a great job. He got to drive one last night, pulled mine in and out of the garage, and that was, and he enjoyed himself. And then I got a phone call from her uh, last night telling me how much he enjoyed it. It's all about the youth. We're trying to keep them a different way to keep these kids out of trouble. Mm -hmm. If we keep them at the track, they're broke. They have no money, so they can't get into <laughs> the other extracurricular activities that uh, cause problems. Like I said, that's why we're there. That's how I got into it. My dad got me into it, and I was always young and broke and racing anything that I had motor. Scott, we appreciate your time, all the, all the stories that you were able to tell us, your, your family history about it, and good luck in the rest of the season. Thank you very much.